Hey, it's Lisa. I have a project share and a tutorial we'll be following. These are little boxes for gifts that you can give to friends, family members, neighbors, stick on someone's door for any occasion. You decorate it however you want. And you've probably seen similar things. Uh, they're not special. They've been made for a long time. Just uh, this one may be a little different size. I haven't seen anyone else make it but I have seen the style. And what I mean is when you take the lid off and you open it up, it's a little stair stepper. But in this case, instead of holding gifts or um, something square, I've made it to where it can hold the Hershey Nuggets because, well, I love Hershey Nuggets. So I will set this up. Just wanted to show you some of the ideas for decorations. And then I will start into the tutorial to show you how to make it. Okay, I apologize. I don't have great equipment. I don't have any real lighting. I don't even have a window in my craft room. How sad is that? Um, but I'm doing the best I can, so hopefully you can see okay. This is the little box I was showing you earlier, and it ends up being about two and a half inches tall when the box itself, and then you can decorate it however you want. This one happens to be decorated mostly with crafters companion items because uh, well, I'm a crafter's companion junkie. I love everything that that the company has pretty much um, from the foam flowers to little fairies to all the pretty papers and stamps. But uh, you can decorate them with whatever you want for whatever occasion you want. The way the little boxes work is once you take off your lid. And like I said, you've seen these probably in many different ways in jewelry boxes, uh, gifts. When you open them up, you have three little, sorry, four little stepper up drawers. I'm laying it down so they fall out, they fall out. This one is designed, instead of being squares or all the drawers exactly equal on all sides, uh, to where it will hold rectangles, and in this case, Hershey Nuggets. Because Hershey Nuggets rule the candy world, in my opinion. And I'm going to show you real quick how to make them. It's actually really simple. Basically, you have four inner shelves that are exactly the same size. They've only been glued in at different angles. You have a wrap that they're stuck onto, and you have a lid. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I made this. This makes it look way more complicated than it is. But this was the easiest way for me to be able to cut it out using the least amount of paper which I think most of us like to do, so we feel like we're saving a little bit. This is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. And whenever you um, are figuring out what material you want to use to make it, just keep in mind, um, if it's really that wimpy construction paper that will not hold up your candies very long, they'll just fall off. Um, so this is a, about 100 to 110 pounds is probably good. If you get much thicker than that, or if you're gonna decorate it, a lot then you might need a little bit um, larger size lid and I'll get to that later but for right now if you're just gonna make just a basic one this is what you're gonna cut out so again eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper and I will write all these measurements in the show little section underneath the video so on your eight and a half by eleven piece of paper if you just cut off going lengthwise on the eleven inch side cut off a four and a fourth inch piece because that's you're not even going to use it so just cut that off okay then what you're left with is what you're going to make everything out of for your little box so your wrap is going to be and I wouldn't even worry about this piece yet because this is just a, a three fourths inch piece that's just going to come off that's probably going to be your waist and you're going to have a little piece right here that's waste. And, you know, like I put on here, this is the perfect size for stamping your sentiment. Like where I stamp the with love on that one. And then you can cut it down to whatever size you want. So, if you start off here, this side, this little piece, after you've cut this off, just cut off two and five eighths inch. Another two and five eighths inch. And then two and a half inches. So you have three pieces. So, when you cut it, you're just going to have that piece, that piece, and that piece. Hopefully that makes sense and I'm not making it too complicated. So, when you're done, you're just going to have those pieces. A two and a half inch piece, 
a two and a five eighths inch piece and another two and a five eighths inch piece. Now, going back to this, you're going to need four inner shelves, one lid, one wrap. The inner shelves are all the same size and they will all equally cut out this. So you're going to take at least one of your two and five eighths inch pieces and you're going to cut it into three equal pieces. And that's going to be at two and one fourth, two and one fourth, two and one fourth, and that'll be this entire piece. The other two and five eighths inch piece is going to be two and a fourth, just like these, and then one three inch, which is going to be your lid, and then that's going to, the rest is going to be just throw it away or use it for stamping. The other piece, the entire piece, is going to be your wrap, and that will be all that you need. So let's get to showing you what you've got here. I tried to cut them out ahead of time so I didn't make you sit there and watch me cut them all out. I hope you don't mind. Some people like to see everything step by step. I personally like to just, I, I usually fast forward everything. Um, okay, so I've cut them out. I didn't want you to have to sit there and watch me cut them out, but I cut them out. So here I have it. And like I said, I'll put all the sizes down below. So for each inside drawer, you're going to have four drawers. Each drawer is going to be two and five eighths by two and a fourth. You're going to have one lid, two and five eighths by three. And then you're going to have your wrap, which is the two and a half by, where was it, six and three fourths piece. Now you're going to score. I've already scored these three, but in case you, you're new to crafting, scoring is pretty easy. You can do it on just a cutter if that's all you have. Um, if you have a cutting, I mean a scoring board, it's a lot easier, of course. So every drawer is scored at 5 8 inch. And I made it 5 8 inch because a half, they fell out too much. At 3 fourths, they were up too high. And so I know 5 eighths is an odd, odd size, but it seemed to work the best. Now I have scored things, and I think most crafters will agree that even though you could count back 5 eighths from this side, always score from the same edge. For some reason, I don't know what power in the universe makes it weird, but it always seems to throw it off a little bit if you try to measure it out and be, you know, use your physics and count it back. Anyway, anyway calculations. Anyway. So, score all four sides at five eighths. So each one of these is an eighth mark. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Or it's the mark after the half. And then you just score down. Turn it. I'm going to go to the same side. <laughs> I love this little itty bitty scoring board by We Are Memories Keeper. Crafter's Companion did release a new mini scoring board. I saw it the last time I was watching them on HSN. And I want it, but I don't have it. So anyway, this one is just wonderful for now. And five eighths. Five eighths. And five eighths. Of course, you're not going to write on your drawers. So I have all four of my drawers are all scored. I don't know if you can see it. Eh, probably not. Not in my horrible lighting, you can't. But each one of these is scored equally at 5 eighths inch. Now for the lid, I have kitties, can you tell? I play with my kitties. We like to fight, but it's fun. Um, my lid is 2 and 5 eighths by 3. You're going to score your lid at 3 fourths. The drawers were scored at 5 eighths. The lid is scored at 3 fourths. And again, it's on all four sides, 3 fourths. Now, just so you know, because crafting always has to have a little niche in it somewhere that just has to irritate you. If you're a person like me who likes to put a lot of decorations and a lot of layers on your sides to make them all... Um, layered up and have really cool looking little matting on your things, your lid may be really tight. If you're going to decorate simply, this is the size you need. Two and five eighths by three. If you're like me and you like to put two or three layers of decorations on all the sizes, your lid might be too tight. There have been a couple that I've made this lid for and went, it was too tight. So the next size up, literally is one eighth bigger on all sides and it is two and three fourths by three and one eighth. You will still 
score all four sides at three fourths. So the only thing that that's doing is it's making this inner box that's your little wrapper is going to fit into. So if I put that there, you will see that it is just a little bit over the edge. And this one is just about the same size. You probably can't see it in this light, but it is. <laughs> so take my word for it. So if you make it and you go try on your lid before you fully decorate it, if it's way too tight for you, make a lid that's two and three fourths by three and one eighths. So that's probably the only thing in this whole project that is one of those things where you go, it's not working. So if you want a lid that fits tight, this one. If you want a lid that's sort of loose, or if you're going to put on, like this is like just one layer, but if you're going to put on multiple layers, you will probably want this bigger lid at two and three fourths by three and one eighths. But again, regardless of what size you make your lid, you're still going to score every side at three fourths inch. So it should be the same. Now, once you have all of your pieces, oh, gotta score this guy. This is your wrap. The wrap is really the easiest part because there's no gluing, there's no taping, nothing. The only thing you do is you score it and then you can decorate all the panels however you want or not decorate them at all. And one thing I did love is that um, if you have a very nicely decorated or foiled cardstock, this is the uh, Crafter's Companion gold and black, or black and gold, I can't remember which one comes first, cardstock. It's a nice heavyweight cardstock. It's very um, comes in all different kinds in the pad. It has all different kinds of foil designs. It's the perfect weight and you don't even have to decorate it. And you can use your leftovers, that little piece, that little four and a fourth that I was casting aside to decorate your candies with. So just so you know, in case you don't want to go through all the decorations, get a nice decorated piece of paper and you're all set up. But again, if you're like me and you like to really over decorate, you can make this any color you want, decorate however you want. So here's your wrap. You're going to score at one and one half, two and five eighths, two five eighths, four and a four, four and one eighth, and five and one fourth. Now, now that you have them all scored, you're going to decorate. Uh, there's really even no need to use your bone folder to press it as you go. Uh, I, sometimes I do if I want a nice crisp edge, but you don't have to, just so you're, that's how simple it is. At this point, if you are using a lightweight card, not lightweight, a light colored card, and you're wanting to um, ink around the edges, I would really do that now before you start cutting and bending because it's so much easier. Um, these are the Harmony uh, Spectrum Nor ink pads from Crafter's Companion that um, I really like them. I just do. I also like Tim Holtz Distressed Inks and to be honest I think these have a more vibrant color but they do react to water the same way so you can get lots of effects. Uh, one of my favorite ways to ink things like this is to um, have a mixed color because I'll probably use papers like this to have multiple colors in it. And so one of the things that I do is just a little tip for me is that I use my little foamer for me and I will have two complementary colors or that match this and I will just do half of my foamy in one color and turn it around and do the other half of my foamy in that color and then that way whenever I am inking up my edges I just hold it to the side see where my two colors are they're very different don't do it like this because you're just going to blend them, but if you keep them up, you can just go and see so you get both colors at the same time. And if you go over them a little bit, no biggie. And of course every now and then you're going to have to re-ink, but that way you get lots of different, you can, you can get two different colors at once. Inking, smearing, blending, to make it all you know blend up it's about the same. I just like the way it looks. And you would also do your little drawer edges. You can cut them first if you want because you do have to cut out the little edges, but it's a lot easier just to do it this way. And if you just bend a little bit, there you go, there's your creases. Just bend a little bit and rub them in. That way you have some color on your drawers. You don't have to, just a, just a recommendation. Okay, so on your wrap, you are going to 
just fold. And hey, wrap's done. That's what you have to do. No taping, no nothing. Wrap is done. That's how easy that is. Now for your drawers though, and for your lid, you need to clip the little fold out edges. And uh, if you've ever seen the little boxes made, what is this, on each score line, you know how you've got the scores going all the way around, maybe if I did it like this you can see it better. Again, I apologize. I'm definitely no tutorial expert and I will never claim to be. I tend to just do things and go and I'm not necessarily a very good explainer at times. So here I am. There you can see all my score lines pretty clear. For your box, lid, and your drawers, you're going to do them all exactly the same. You're going to come in on your first score line and you're going to clip it up to the next score line. Just right there. That's it. You're going to tip same thing. First score line to first score line. 90 degrees, flip. First score line to first score line. Yep. First score line to first score line. So now you have your four little tabs. And these are the ones that you're going to fold in to make your little box. Just like that. Now if you don't mind these edges poking up, which drives me insane, you don't really have to do the next step. But to me it makes it, uh, makes it look a lot better. So if you don't like to do all this extra work, don't do it. But this, to me, makes it look better. And that is, is that you're going to make these little tabs dipped in. You, they do not have to be even. They do not have to be this size. You could make one fat, one skinny, no biggie. Uh, once you do them a couple times, you'll probably realize that you have a size that you like. So see, I did a fat one and a skinny one, and nobody's going to be the wiser when I glue it together. So snip, snip and turn. Now, this is going to happen to you, so I'm going to show you what happens. You're going to accidentally, at some point, get really irritated with yourself because you've snipped over a little bit because you were in too big of a hurry and you didn't edge it up unless you're way more perfect than I am. And you can get really mad at yourself because you'll be like, I ruined my lid, my box. No, you didn't. Okay, Just you can see how that is still a little messed up in there. Just go back, straight up cut right there, and you can see that little itty bitty piece that's stuck in there. I don't know if you can, hopefully it'll let me. Yes, yeah, it's not letting me. But just clip it out. Okay, it looks like you have an extra wide spot, but once you glue your drawer together, it's not going to matter. This is just art glitter glue. I just put it in a little container. So once you get your drawers decorated, like right now if you wanted to, you could put um, a little piece of paper. I would do it just on one side because the rest of the side you're not going to see. Um, you would, um, you could clip them. You could make them have little arches in them. If you want them plain, just leave them plain. Decorate your little drawers however you want. Uh, you can use the tape glue. I mean the tape. You could use the tape runner because it's only going to hold a Hershey nugget, you know, or something else lightweight. So the only thing I that you do is first of all you get your glue running. Oh, that's the worst part of these. Let's see here. I probably have another one, but I like to use a a bead needle. It's also what I use to run my um, stamens through my flowers and pull out the little piece that got hard in there. And then you can just glue, glue, glue. And it's so simple, even with glue, and I think it doesn't waste any tape. And you just glue. And with the art glitter glue, it does catch fast, so done. So you would glue each side. Now when you do the first two, it's easy peasy. But when you get down to these last two, you want to make sure that they're both inside. Because, I mean, you, if you mess up, no big deal. You just have to finagle it a little bit. But then just glue, 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 glue. Stick, press, stick, press. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oops, there. Yeah. Okay, there you go. It's your door. So you're going to do that to all four drawers, and then your drawers are done. So that's how easy this is. Same thing with your lid. You're going to have inked it, you're going to clip clipped it, and you're going to done all your drawers. So whenever you are done, your four drawers. are going to be all 
I'm really equipped. And do what you fall down. Two. I guess I could get my waist out of here. So you're going to have your four doors. Your wrap. Oh, I didn't equip my little lid. You would use the big lid. And I'll just remind you how to do this one more time. So I've already scored this one at three fourths because this is a lid. I'm going to clip at the first score up to the first score line. Turn, find my first, find my score line up to the score line. Turn, score line to score line. Turn, score line to score line. Then I'm going to make my little tabs have some easy shape to make them fold in easier. And then don't forget, decorate it however you want. If you start gluing and everything before you decorate, no biggie. You can go back and do it. It's just a little bit easier if it's all flat, but even if it's not, it's easy just to glue on whatever decorations you want. Uh, if you want a mat, put something else. Um, done. So, one more thing to show how to fold. Fold in your little tabs. And these are your lid is going to be done exactly like your drawers are. You're going to glue, yeah. glue and hold. Or, like I said, if you have tape, it's instant. If you're using art glitter glue, it's pretty instant. This stuff grabs fast. I don't know how I ever crafted without art glitter glue now. I think most people agree with me. I've heard that the reptile glue is good as well, but I haven't used it at all. And so if you have any other recommendations for great glue that catches fast, write it down. If you ever glue something like this, it's stuck already, but you've messed up the edge, it's okay. Just use, you can use a toothpick and put a little glue on it, or if you have one of these fine tip things, just put a little ball of glue out on the end. Just stick it in there. Done. Okay, now we'll get back in the next little round here and show you how to stick your drawers together. Okay, so now we're down to just sticking it all together. Here's what you got. You get your four Hershey nuggets, got your lid, got your four little boxes, got your wrap. These Hershey nuggets are done just like you have seen probably a bazillion um, Hershey nugget candy wrapper tutorials for the last decade <laughs> or so. Where um, to wrap them, if you don't have to wrap them obviously, you can just put them in their little drawers, call it good uh, when you stack them together. But if you want to wrap them in a coordinating paper, it's simply a three inch by one inch piece of paper. This happens to be from the in, um, Enchanted Forest line by Crafter's Companion. That's where a lot of fairy stuff comes from too. To me it's one of the prettiest lines that's out there. Um, to seal it, to make it go on, uh, you can use the art glitter glue, which is my favorite thing. Or you can use um, just, you know, tape, score pal, uh, a roller. Uh, one of the recommendations by most all the crafters that do this or the people who wrap Hershey nuggets for craft fairs is to start it. You always have this little down arrow, <laughs> by the way, just so you know. This is the one with an almond. It's the last one with an almond. If you're getting one from me, there's a good chance you're only going to get the toffee because I don't like the toffee. And let's be fair, ladies. We're going to eat the Hershey's with the almonds. Anyway, so you stick it on there because you're going to pull it down. Because if you put it back on this way and you pull it, chances are you'll open it and you don't want to give somebody an open piece of candy. So you put your little paper there. Some people attach it at this point. I don't. I just wrap it around. It fits perfect. Squeeze a little bit to hold it together. Put me just a dot or two of glue. That one's almost out. I love these little bottles. You get them from Amazon. I love these fine tips. And you can see mine's all messed up. That's because my tip pulled out. So all I do is um, I put some super glue on it and I learned from Tracy, no, Heather Tracy, who does amazing miniature work and just gorgeous gothic designs. Take the uh, super glue, dab it on there and d jam some um, baking powder on it and it causes a reaction. And so it turns it instantly into like a little concrete. Uh, you can sand it, you can do whatever. That sucker's not going to come out there for a while, and if it does, I just redo it again. So that's just super glue and baking soda. Makes it a hard little thing, so it's stuck on there for a while anyway. So, in order to do that, just put a little dot, art glitter glue, hold it, all done. Okay, so then you have your four pieces of candy, your Hershey's nuggets. 
set those aside because that'll be the last thing you put in. I got my lid all done. I've put a little piece of paper. I've only cut it an eighth of an inch shorter than my size on each side. I didn't really do anything to my drawers other than just ink them. Here's my wrap. You saw me how I inked the insides of the edges. Well, I did put paper on it. And again, just cut the paper just a little bit, one eighth of an inch smaller in each direction for each panel. So now the wrap is done, lid's done, drawer's done. Now to put it together, you can see here you're going to have, you pick out which one of these sides you want on the front. Obviously I'm going to want this one on front because I picked out my favorite designer paper for that. Well, it's the same paste paper, but the cutest little piece. So that one's going to go on the front. Now I can stamp an image or I can put a little message on the inside. That's fine. But that one, the one that you're going to have on the front, you do not put a drawer on. That's your flap. Just keep that in mind. Now when you open it like this, you're going to unfold it. So what you do is you start off on the other side, the side that you isn't going to be your beginning. You're going to take one of your drawers and you're going to make it mesh right to the bottom. Okay. Um, some people I have seen who make the boxes put theirs down a little bit further, which I sort of like that because then if you have any overage at the top, it sort of helps with that. Or you can just put it right even, whatever is best for you. Either way, it's not going to affect it much. So I put some glue all the way around. Come on, she got me a full one. Yep. And you're just going to eye it and put it right to the edge or just a teeny tiny hair over. And you're just going to hold it there. Try to get it as straight as you can. Okay, now the next one, as you can see, is a smaller one. So obviously it's not going to fit like that because it's too big. So you're going to do it like this. Right? But how am I going to make sure I got it straight over? Is I'm going to fold this over just like that. And then it's going to go like this because I'm going to have them going in the same direction because we're going to have the candies. I'm going to hold it down there. I'm just going to butt that up to it. And if you want to make sure it fits, just flip it out, flip it in, flip it out, flip it in. There we go. Perfect. Now, the next one, I know it's going to have to go this way because it's a wide panel. Okay, can't see it. Oh, take that one out. There we go. I fell off. I didn't give it time to dry. Hold on. Do it again. See, that's what you're going to do too. So now you'll know what to do. You have to re glue it, re glue it. I didn't hold it long enough. Yeah. Or you can use tape. If you really want it to be sturdy, you can use your red line tape. Okay, so there we go. Right on here. Oh, I did it crooked. That's probably okay. It's not going to be a big deal. Okay, so now we're going to go this way. There we go. Fold it back. So this one, you're going, like I said, you're going to keep them all open. Get your direction right. It's going to go up. It's going to go right here. Loop, 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 loop. Right there. Straight down. I'll hold it this time to remind myself. So now I've got three. One more to go. You know, do a little double check, make sure it's going to slide in there. Okay, this one, little panel, it's going to go up. You can fold it out so you can see it better. And then it's going to go right in there. And you know, if you happen to do this and you haven't done it quite right and you got a piece hanging over, you know, and you're like, yeah, it's hanging over, just cut it off even. Don't worry about it too much. It's just going to hold candy. So there we go. All four drawers all lined up, ready to go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So there you go. Got your four little drawers. It's going to fold all in there just fine. And you've got your lid, and you put your lid on it, and you got yourself a little candy holder. So now, again, like that. So after you've wrapped your candy, each one of these is going to have a candy in it. Now we need to decorate that lid, don't we? Da -da -da -da. There it is. All four of them. Good. Now, I'm going to show you some of the lids that I've decorated, and I'll give you just a few hints on if you want something dangling off of it, like I've made some of the other ones. Um, 
Let me show you some of the others. So here is the one I made for Valentine's Day. You can see I've just put some flat back pearls on it. This has lots of little sprinkly sparklies and everything's coming out. These two little hearts right here are Crafter Companion dies that came with her advent calendar. If you haven't, um, if you don't know what the Crafter's Companion advent calendar is for the last two years, Sarah Davies, who owns Crafter's Companion, um, has done an advent calendar for us crafters. Of course, you have to buy it. It's not free. Um, usually averages 20 to 25 bucks or so, but you get 24 days of dies. And you open them up, and each day is a surprise die. And um, I think I think this one was from last year's. I'm not sure, but I think so. And this one was from this year's, or my own backwards. This is just a little piece of resin that I made out of a Wilton uh, mold, and I've had it stuck in my stuff forever. I simply just super glued it onto a piece of wire and put a little flatback pearl to hide that part. So nothing special. These are just those little sprays. But then, how do I get it to stick to the lid? Well, in this case, I just used a needle and I poked some holes in the top and I stuck these wires in. And as I was holding them, I super glued them. I did, not super glue, I um, hot glue. I just put some hot glue on it. And then I had cut a little piece of matching cardstock that fit right in and I just stuck it in there to cover up the oogies. So that's all it is. And then it just stuck straight up. That simple. So just some flat back pearls, stuck some spiky things in there, hot glued it. Put a piece of cardstock on it so nobody can see the hot glue. Call it good. Um, oh, look at here. It doesn't always have to be Hershey chocolates. In this case, cute little pair of Valentine earrings. And I had um, gone through some of my craft supplies and realized that I had some of the charms that um, was included in the gold and black signature collection from Crafter's Companion, where she had. Uh, given some golden charms to go with the paper cardstock, the foiled cardstock. I hadn't used any of them, and I thought, well, what a waste, and Valentine's Day is getting ready to come up. So I grabbed some of, um, out of my hoard, um, um, stash, hoard's a dirty word, right, in the crafting world? Anyway, grabbed some hooks and some uh, jump rings, just really simple, really two minutes have a pair of earrings for Valentine's Day to give either to some of my nieces or a friend or most likely for myself. Okay, and you can put those in your little drawers. It doesn't always have to be candy. There are other tutorials online where people have made these in little squares or they've made bigger versions. For instance, if you want to do five drawers, do five drawers. Everything would be exactly the same except for you would add that extra five inch on top. So instead of having a two and a half inch wrapper, you would add your 5 8 inch on top and you'd have a little taller wrapper and you'd have it up here. You could make this thing 5 foot tall if you wanted to. Just, you know, it'd still be the same. Just change your wrapper size to match whatever you want, how many drawers you want. Um, here is get out of here. Uh, a little steampunk version. I think this is Marion Smith paper here. Um, but the Dream Big was a die in the advent calendar. Uh, Whenever you want things to poke up off the top, that's just, you know, poke it in, poke holes in it. Or in this case, I had um, rusted some paper clips and I just took some pliers and I just bent the bottom and then I just super glued it so it could hold my banner. It's always nice to have something that's a little bit more masculine, even though I could probably, you know, put this guy on the front for a favorite guy. But I love steampunk stuff. And again, it's the same thing inside. The candies. This one is more of a wintry theme. Winter Wishes. This is from Crafter's Companion stamp and dies. This is an edgeable die, which normally would just edge up the top of a paper, off of the top of a card, and it doesn't cut off completely, so I just cut it off, and then that way I could wrap it around my lid. So it gives it more like a winter crown look. And you can see this is on a little springy. This is actually the, um, you've probably seen these, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby in the wedding section where it's just a pearl with some rhinestones. Uh, when I cut off the wire, I just used a wire and wrapped it around a pencil. And that's what's holding on my sentiment. Uh, this is probably my favorite because I love Halloween. This is the Juju Crafts. Uh, this is the Diamond Press, AKA Secret Crafters Companion because they own Diamond Press. I think they do anyway. Um, 
from their Halloween shaker die kit, which is really just a tiny little shaker set, and it's so cute. But there's a bat and um, a little candy corn, and I can't remember what else. Anyway, so cute, and it comes with a little eek. This is just some paper that I cut really, really thin, and I just stuck it in glue on there. Again, this is just on a wire, and I'll show you how I attach those. Just use a circle punch and add it a little, a little spooky on top of the candy. This one's probably one of my favorites, and it's really simple, and I usually don't like simple things. Um, this was an incentive. I just cut the, ins the, sen the sen sentiment apart, sentiment stamp, and just stuck it on there that you did it. And it's a little ballerina die that was also one of the advent calendar dies that came in this year. I love her. I have a lot of little nieces that do dance, and I was thinking what a great, great thing to make them a little gift for. Very simple. Didn't have to do much. Just put one thing on top. I did cut out the ballerina several times. I'll show you a little bit more on that in a second, and glued them together to make it thick so it didn't just pop over. But I still need to add one more fairy just to make it more sturdy, but she still looks pretty fine. This is for my sister. My sister is a fairy nut. But her birthday was a couple days ago, and I was going to get this in the mail, and I'm late, but I did tell her I was late. Uh, Crafters Companion has foam flower kits with dyes and st stamens and all kinds of things. Um, I know for a while there I was trying to buy the foam I ran, but it was like a $2 a sheet. And of course they have to sneak it from Iran through the Ukraine, blah, 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 blah. Well, Crafters Companion designed their own, so we no longer have to sneak and try to get our foam for the flowers that way. They actually have them coming straight to us, and um, that way it's it's a lot cheaper. It seems like it was only like $14 for a packet, and they have a great kit that has the stylist and the balls and the stamens and comes with dyes, and anyway. Um, I just love it. I just love it, love it, love it. So now, what if you want to put one of these on top? Well, that's just a piece of wire and a die cut. Same thing here. Piece of wire and a die cut. Um, piece of wires, die cuts. Piece of wires, die cuts. Now, how do you get the wire cut, the wires onto the lids? In this case, I put the wire between several layers of a die cut, put a wire through it, same thing, stuck a hole in it, stuck the wire down, bent it over, put some hot glue on it, and then glued a piece of cardstock. Okay. Now, the other way to do it is the way that this one was done. Made a little coil out of your wire. It is just coiled and glued. I had to stop it. The camera said it had a little problem, so I hope all that recorded right. The other way, if you don't want to poke a hole and glue it, is you can see I did the same thing here. Made several layers. And I glued it on. Okay, easy way. Make one layer. Put your wire on. Put a little piece of paper over top of the wire. Not near as pretty. Equally effective. Up to you. Um, in this case, multiple layers between. It's glued between it. And then on the coil, I coiled it a couple of times. And this almost makes it. I forget what those things are that they actually sell. I always made my wiggle woggle things just on my own I'll be just any piece of wire but and it works just as good but you know it'll wiggle and woggle whenever you put things down um, I poked a hole through a little circle that I had punched out twisted my coil in there to where there was one coil underneath and then either hot glue it or in this case I put some red line glue then on the top of my box I'll take off this and I'll just stick it right on my box and I got a little wiggle wiggle stuck to the top of my box. And then you can further decorate it just by gluing flowers around it or whatever you need to. Um, some ideas on how to decorate your dies is just embossing powders. This is several coats of embossing powder. Um, I use a Melt Art Pot still, the old ancient thing, but you can just put your Versamark on it and emboss away. Um, this is the same thing. This was the Crafter's Companion purple embossing powder and then some black that I had. I think this looks really cool. I didn't blend them, I didn't stir them. I just melted them, sprinkled and melted. Same thing here. 
I did a black and gray, black and white, and then I just sprinkled some purple on for her little tutu, and melted. And that's in UT, that's why it looks so thick on that one. Which I don't even know if they make that anymore. But I have a bunch of it, so. Or you can just do multiple levels of embossing powder. Uh, if you have glitter cardstock, and not all glitter cardstock would do this, but this is the Crafter's Companion glitter cardstock, the luxury cardstock. It comes in packages with matte, shiny mirror, and glitter of the same colors or similar colors. And um, I found out by accident one day that if alcohol touches it, that you can see right here, this is just where I let alcohol drip down it, off of a piece off of it. This is all this color. And the way that I made it was I thought that, um, you know, I wanted a little variation. So I just used some mm, alcohol, cheapo alcohol. Uh, you don't have to use 91, I'm sure anything will work. Put me a little Q-tip. Got me a little alcohol on it. Got me a little paper towel. And then if I just rub it on there, the alcohol, look at that, takes it right off and you're left with silver shiny. See, so her legs and arms and head, I want it to not be purple. So I just use alcohol, rub, 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 until I got it the color I wanted. Fun stuff. Or if you just let it drip, you're going to get this effect, which is fun. Um, again, you could use any sentiment. Just put a wire on it, stick it on top. Or you know, if you wanted to, you could just put a piece of paper behind it, stick it on top. You have endless, endless boundaries of decorating Hershey Nuggets now. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Again, I know I'm not a tutorial maker and uh, just wanted to share some fun ideas. It's going to be one of my goals, though, is to try to make more in the future. Have fun!